Okay, let's go over uh, section two of the visual field lecture. Again, this is from the BCSC uh, series, chapter three. Essentially, it's part two, visual field interpretation. Again, the slides or images outlined in green are from Dr. Allward. Blue images are from the BCSC series, and red images are from my own collection. So let's go over the visual field analyzer, the Humphrey field analyzer. You need to know some specifications for the old caps. Again, on the Humphrey Field Analyzer 2, it's a 30 centimeter bowl. This is an important number because you set that as your distance for calculating the relative triangle size using 17 millimeters for the distance from the nodal point to the retina. By doing that, you can calculate uh, corresponding retinal size defects from a visual field size defect, um, as you did in the last lecture. Background illumination is 31.5 apopstilbs. The brightest light stimulus is 10,000 apopstilbs. Test stimulus duration is typically 200 microseconds. The number of points tested depends on the pattern that's uh, asked for or selected on a 30-2 test. There's 76 locations tested on a 24-2 test. There's 54 locations. Test taking time depends on the pattern and the strategy that's uh, chosen to be tested. Typically for a full threshold 30-2 pattern, it takes 12 to 15 minutes per eye. This can be reduced with a full threshold 24-2 pattern to 10 to 12 minutes and it can be reduced even more with a CETA uh, standard 24-2 uh, test to 5 to 8 minutes. There are two basic uh, types of tests that you could do with visual with the Humphrey visual field, screening tests and threshold tests. Screening tests are done to really look at large numbers of patients or populations for possible glaucomatous changes. They're not really sensitive enough or they don't threshold or bracket threshold enough to follow patients long term for glaucoma. Threshold tests actually will uh, carefully or more carefully uh, bracket the actual threshold values uh, and give you data that you could follow up long term uh, with regards to stability of the visual field. And I'll explain that a little bit more uh, later. Um, there are a number of different screening tests that are available on the Humphrey Field Analyzer 2. They're listed here, but again, we don't use these typically, so I won't go into them at great length here. Threshold tests are technically the gold standard for visual field measurements. The field locations are bracketed in various ways. That's different strategies, either see the standard, see the fast, full threshold, fast pack, etc., um, to determine threshold. And they're bracketed multiple times, typically. Um, and that's done to basically test patient variability and reliability. Um, there are a number of different threshold tests and strategies that can be done. Uh, the central field patterns are typically the most common and the ones we typically order are either the 24-2, 30-2, or central 10-2 test patterns. Typically for glaucoma, the 24-2 is usually the most commonly one used. Um, but there are peripheral tests as, as shown here. And there are a number of different test-taking strategies that can be employed, either see the standard or fast, or full threshold, or fastback. They all differ in the way that threshold is bracketed. Historically, it's important to know the difference between test patterns. Uh, there, at one point, was a 24-1 and a 30-1. They're no longer used. The difference between the 30-1 and the 30-2 test is the spacing of the um, tested locations. That is, in a 30-1 test, the the uh, tested locations fall along the horizontal and vertical meridians. The points are still offset by six degrees from each other. In a 30-2 test, the tested locations are um, offset from the vertical and horizontal meridians by three degrees. Uh, in each of these tests, the neighboring points that are tested are all six degrees apart. Therefore, in a 30-2 pattern, we're testing basically every six degrees of the visual field. If you combine the information from a 30-1 and 30-2 test, we theoretically could test every three degrees of the visual field. But no one really does this clinically. Everyone uh, sticks typically with a dash two uh, test pattern, either 24-2 or 30-2. Um, the difference between a 24-2 and a 30-2 are the number of test locations that are checked. If both of these are right eye a test, you can see there's a far more number of points that are tested in a 30-2 than a 24-2. The ones that are cut out in a 24-2 compared to the 30-2 are typically your superior and inferior, inferior peripheral points, your temporal points, 
and a few along the, uh, the periphery here. The reason these points are not really as uh, necessary for testing glaucoma is because they hold little information uh, typically in glaucoma cases. In most glaucoma uh, participants or pe people, uh, they'll have e they will have either a nasal uh, defect, which is why we still test out to 30 degrees, um, they'll have a paracentral defect, which will be detected in here, or they'll have uh, superior inferior arcuate defects, which are typically 10 to 15 degrees from fixation, so in this region here. The only field defect that you might miss on a 24-2 that could be a glaucomatous would technically be a temporal wedge. And those are usually not seen until the late stages of the disease, so it's not that critical. There are different test-taking uh, strategies to bracket uh, thresholds. Uh, the one that's typically uh, described is the full threshold strategy. The way that this is uh, bracketed is with a 4-2 staircase. And what that means is that the machine will uh, jump in increments of four decibels uh, until the patient reports seeing the stimulus. And then once it's seen, the machine decreases the stimulus by two decibels until it's no longer seen again. So again, it's most easily understood by this diagram here. The